بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سورة العصر is a Meccan surah according to the majority of the scholars of Tafsir الإمام الشافعي said something beautiful about this surah. He had two statements. I'll mention one now and I'll conclude with the second one. He said, if people contemplate, ponder upon this surah, it would suffice them from having to uh, reflect on anything else. It's enough as admonishment. The name of the surah is uh, Al-Asr, according to the majority of uh, the books of Tafsir. It was revealed after uh, Al-Sharh and before Al-Ma'un, and there is no particular reason for revelation. Allah says, Wal-Asr, inna al-insana lafi khusr, illa al-ladina amanu wa amilu salihati, wa tawasaw bil-haqqi, wa tawasaw bil-sabr. Excellent son. Wal-Asr. Now, the letter Wow in the Arabic language indicates an oath given, right? So Allah Azza wa Jal is swearing by Al-Asr. And when Allah Azza wa Jal swears, and we said this a few times before, and I'll repeat it for those who weren't present. When Allah swears, this oath indicates two things. Number one, the greatness and importance of the thing he's swearing by. And in this case, it's Al-Asr. Right? The second thing is to indicate that what's coming after this is something that is serious, important, of great value. So be mindful of it. Pay attention to what's going to be said after the oath, which is the object of the oath. Right? What is Al-Asr? Al Al-Asr was given three different meanings by uh, different scholars and companions as well. Ibn Abbas uh, said it is time. So it is as if Allah has given an oath by time. He, comes because, he said because uh, this time is the actual alternation of day and night and it is in these days and nights is when uh, or where a person performs his actions and this is where it's important as al hasan al basri rahmatullah alayhi said ibn adam o son of adam you are none but days you're nothing but days and every day passes a part of you ends and you're about to reach a time where all of you has ended. You're gone. That's it. Have you uh, ever been into that uh, ICU and people have these uh, monitors that monitor the heart rate, heartbeat, and pulse, and pressure, and temperature? When someone dies, it goes dee, like this a constant beep, right? Well, that's going to come, but the trick here is that we don't know when. That's why we have to be always alert. That's one interpretation, that it's time. Another interpretation uh, was said by Qatada is that it means the time from uh, after Zenith, when the sun has passed Zenith, until the sun sets, right? A third interpretation or meaning given by Muqatil is that it is talking about the actual prayer, Salatul Asr. Now, regarding Salatul Asr and the importance of Salatul Asr, the Prophet Sallallahu and this is reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim, he said, whoever misses Salatul Asr, it is as if he has lost his family and his wealth. I heard one of the scholars once given a, a, an example so 
that the idea is closer to the mind. He said, imagine that you have a wife or wives and children and a house or houses, a car or cars, and then you go out to your business or to work or for whatever, shopping, and then when you return home, you discover that the houses caught, were caught on fire, so the wife or wives died, children died, houses burnt, furniture ruined, cars ruined, everything is gone. How would you feel? If you were to go home and discover that the entire family died and all that you possessed ruined, well, missing Salatul Asr is worse than that. Yet people take it so lightly. Oh, I'll just make it up. Make it up. Subhanallah. So simple. So Allah gives an oath. Now the object of the oath is the following, the second verse. Inna al-insana lafi khusr. Indeed, mankind is in loss. Now, inna in Arabic and the letter lam are used, each is used to confirm something. Verily, indeed, for sure. Now, both were used in this verse to further emphasize that it is very confirmed that mankind is in loss. You know, loss when you people who are in business when you lose it is considered loss when you lose or a decrease happens in your capital right so what is the capital here that we're gonna lose ourselves that's why it's a great 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 serious loss when you work to the destruction of your own self when you wrong your own self that's the worst type of trans uh, of transgression and oppression anyone can practice against his or her own self by not maintaining himself on the path of allah or herself then allah excludes gives qualities of those who will not incur this loss he gave qualities. Illa except. Alladina aman. Wa amiru salihati. Wa tawasaw bil haqqi. Wa tawasaw bil salih. Except for those who believe and do righteous deeds and urge each other to the truth and urge each other to perseverance. Illa alladina aman. First quality is belief because without belief, there is no benefit of anything. Nothing is beneficial. It is like the trunk of the tree from which branches shoot out. Anything good has to have this trunk established first before anything can be expected from that person. I'd like to mention something here that's very important. Now, believe in Allah Azza wa Jal and His Messenger of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam entails that you worship only Allah, that you humble yourself only to Allah, that you are enslaved only by Allah, you're only controlled in your behavior and conduct and governed only by Allah. This is the essence and real and actual freedom. Unlike that fake freedom people seek by trying to detach themselves from the practices Allah ordained, thinking that they're free. See, one has to become or has to be enslaved by someone or something. If it's not Allah, it's going to be desire. It's going to be one. 
It's going to be children. It's going to be business. It's going to be wife. It's going to be husband. It's got to be something that you're going to be enslaved by. Enslaved in what sense? You will conduct yourself. You will behave according to what pleases that thing. So, in essence, you're not really free. But you got yourself out of being a slave to Allah to being a slave to something else. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is in Al-Bukhari, Ta'isa Abdul Dirhami, Ta'isa Abdul Dinari, Ta'isa Abdul Khamilati, Ta'isa Abdul Khamisa, Ta'isa wa antakisa wa idha shika falantakash. Miserable is the one who is enslaved by silver, gold and textile. How can you be enslaved by money? We'll, we'll elaborate. And then the Prophet ﷺ supplicated against him. He said, may he be miserable to the extent that if a throne, if a thorn was to pick him, may it never come out. When Allah Azza revealed, and this is the explanation, how can you be enslaved by something else? When Allah revealed, They took their monks and priests as lords besides Allah. Adi ibn Hatim was Christian before Islam. He said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, by Allah, we never bowed down nor prostrated to them or before them. Now this is the understanding the the wrong understanding of worshiping or being enslaved by something is that you bow down to or, or prostrate before well the prophet said something else he explained the meaning of that he said did they not make what is halal haram for you and what is haram halal for you and you obeyed them in that he said indeed we did and indeed they did he said this is uh, your worship to them this is how you worship them and this is how your job can be your lord when it's time i was in a, in a invited in one one place once and uh, the time of dhuhr became due i said to the brother who was the host i said it's uh, time to pray dhuhr he said oh no never mind i'll pray it later and when Asr comes, I'll just combine. I said, why? He said, I always do that because otherwise I can't attend to my, my business, my customers. Now he is enslaved by his business. Allah came second. The command of Allah came second. His business and his money became first. When this comes first and Allah comes second, that's, you know then that Allah Azza wa Jal, you are not enslaved by him. You're not a slave of him. You're a slave of something else. This is the second quality. They act righteous. Righteous deeds is a, is a natural result and fruit from belief and faith. Uh, now, for a deed to be righteous and accepted by Allah, it has to fulfill two conditions, as we know. Sincerity to Allah, it has, and also it has to coincide with the instructions of Prophet Muhammad. Shaykh Uthaymeen said, if any of these two conditions is not met, then the act is not considered to be a righteous deed. Even if you're worshipping Allah Azza in the form of Qur'atul Qur'an or praying a salah, it's not a righteous deed if it does not fulfill one of these two. Now with these two, one reforms himself. Then Allah Azza wa gives two other qualities that will reform the community. The first are on an individual level, Iman and Amal Salih, belief and righteous deeds. The second two out of the four is for the benefit of the Ummah, of the Muslim community. They urge each other they encourage one another. They remind one another that we have one objective, to call people to the path of Allah. They enjoin one another on that, or to that. 
Now, what is the what is the reason? Why do we need to remind one another, to urge one another? Because obstacles are too many. Our desires, our weakness, outside enemies, whether that Muslims who are weak, who want you to be weak like them, or non-Muslims who simply plot against Muslims and Islam. وَتَوَاصَلْ sabr And urge one, other, one another to persevere. Perseverance is, is very needed when you're calling people to Allah. Why? Because you'll always be faced with those people who will reject your call. Wasn't the call of Muhammad وسلم, rejected and he suffered and he faced many difficult times and those who came after him? Well, this is the nature of calling people to the truth because people are inclined to have an easy life, relaxed life, no commitments, no boundaries. They want to be the false freedom, right? So calling them to Allah is a difficult task. Bringing them back is a difficult mission. So you will need to be uh, patient. Maintaining yourself on Iman and Amal Salih on belief and righteous deeds is also difficult. So. Together, as a group, as a community, in joining one another to persevere, to hold on, will help us continue on this path. This surah is the shortest surah in the Quran. It's only three verses. And in the Mus'haf, it's a line and a, a couple of words. So in size and in number of verses, it's very short, but it's an entire code of life that covered everything. That's why a Shafi'i said, if Allah did not reveal anything except Surah Al-Asr, it would have been enough to cover all aspects. Because it covered belief. Now, belief has all its details. Righteous deeds, all its details. Sheikh Sa'di said, Al-Amal Salih includes everything good, any deed that's righteous, inward or outward, whether it's related to Allah's rights or to the slaves' rights, and whether it is recommended or mandatory. So that doesn't leave anything out. And then in joining good is the mission of prophets, is the task of messengers, and persevering is what's going to help you through all that past that or prior to that. Uh, Abu Madin al-Darimi, and this is reported by Abu Dawood and Sheikh al-Albani classified it as authentic and with it we will conclude. He said, uh, whenever two men of the, or two of the companions of the Prophet Wasallam would meet, they would not depart until one of them recited to the other Surah Al-Asr, and then they would greet each other with salam and then go on their way. Sheikh al-Albani said there are two benefits from this narration. Number one is that it's legislated for us to greet one another when we're leaving. Not only when you come in, as many people do. They greet you when, you come, when they're coming in. When they're leaving, they just leave. No, it's legislated. Uh, to greet one another with salam as we depart. Secondly, he said, it is known by necessity that the companions would never have innovated anything in religion, would not have added or removed anything from the religion. So them doing this, having this as a practice, is something that must have been approved by the Prophet legislated by the Prophet either by action, by words, or by approval. He saw people do it and he approved of it. So uh, it is legislated that when you meet a, a brother in, in faith, before you leave, one of you recite Surah Al-Asr and then greet one another in Salam and then leave. With this we conclude to ask Allah Azza wa Jal to benefit us, to make, it, to make us persevere upon the path.
path of Allah, make us believers, true believers, who act righteously. Allahumma ameen. Subhanakallahumma hamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu alayk.